Hi, this is Dr. Mona Hanatisha from Flint, Michigan. I'm a pediatrician with Hurley Children's Hospital in Michigan State University. I wish I could be with you today, but as you know, Flint is very much still in the middle of our water crisis, um, so it's hard for me to leave my patients. But I am humbled and I'm honored to receive this award um, from you, the 2016 Platinum Award for Outstanding Contribution to Healthcare um, is incredible, and I am absolutely um, honored and humbled. As a physician, um, this is the work that we do. It is my job to take care of my children and to take care of my community. Um, so it is an honor to be, to be honored um, for that work. I wanted to share with you a little bit about our story in Flint, um, specifically what happened, where we are now, and most importantly, where we are going. Um, so as many of you know, the Flint water crisis hit national news about a year ago, but it's a crisis that we've been dealing with um, now for our third year. In April of 2014, the city was, was bankrupt under state-appointed emergency management, and our water source was changed to save money. We severed a relationship with Detroit where we had been getting water for half a century, pre-treated fresh Great Lakes water for half a century. And to save money, we decided to draw water from our local Flint River. And that created a perfect storm um, for lead to leach out of the pipes and into our drinking water. When we started drawing water from the local Flint River, it wasn't being treated. Um, the necessary ingredient, or you can almost think of it like a medicine, called corrosion control, wasn't added to the treatment of the Flint water. And that created um, the corrosion of our pipes, which led to lead in the water and thus lead um, in the bodies of our children. Um, and the heroic people of Flint raised their voices they kept saying, my water is brown, it looks gross, it tasted gross, we had bacteria in the water, we had um, disinfectant byproducts in the water, people had skin rash and multiple, multiple, multiple complaints, and nobody listened to the heroic people of Flint um, because democracy had been usurped. Um, so the, the moms raised their voices and the pastors and the investigative journalists. Um, we also had help from an incredible, incredible um, engineer from Virginia Tech, uh, Professor Mark Edwards, who came up to Flint and with citizen science proved that there was lead in our water, but he was also dismissed. And when a pediatrician, myself, um, heard the word lead, when I heard of the possibility that there was lead in our water, um, that's, that was my call to arms. As a pediatrician, as anybody with any public health background, you understand what lead can do. It is a potent, irreversible neurotoxin that already infects um, our most vulnerable children in communities like Flint, like Detroit, like Chicago, like Baltimore. Um, it disproportionately impacts our children um, who are the most vulnerable. Um, so when I heard that there was lead in the water, I really started my crusade to see if that lead in the water was getting into the bodies of our children. And when we released our research um, a little over a year ago um, that showed that yes, our children had increased lead levels, um, I was also dismissed. Um, and called an unfortunate researcher that I was causing near hysteria. Um, but fortunately, the dismissal of me lasted a short period and it finally created the realization that, hey, we have a serious problem in Flint. Um, fortunately, we were able to switch back to Detroit Water um, in October of 2015. But to this day in Flint, Michigan, that, that, that corrosive water caused so much damage to our infrastructure that we have yet to have safe water in Michigan. And, and for anybody from Michigan, we are the mitten state. And, and Flint is right here. And we are surrounded by the Great Lakes. And the Great Lakes are the largest source of fresh water in the world. Um, and we still have this clearly demarcated population um, of a community that's predominantly poor, predominantly minority, that yet has access to clean water. So that's where we are now. We are still in a day-to-day -day struggle to get people the, the water they need, the, the filters to use um, to drink that water. Um, but my daily work now is, is investing in tomorrow. It is investing in the children and to make sure that our children have everything they need to have the brightest future possible. I'm fortunate now to lead a new initiative. It's, a, it's called the Pediatric Public Health Initiative. It's a partnership between Hurley Children's Hospital and Michigan State University. And our mission is to flip the story. Our mission is to show the world that, yeah, we had this crisis, um, but in five years and 10 years and 15 years, we're gonna share to the world uh, what we were able to proactively do to invest in our children. 
Um, we are wrapping them around with evidence-based interventions to promote their development. Um, and those really span the domains of education, health, and nutrition. We are investing in early education, um, early literacy programs, universal preschools, school health services. We are investing in nutrition, um, trying to get great nutrition access for our families, um, expanding nutritional support, nutrition education services, and healthcare, um, making sure our kids have a medical home that they can go to to make sure that they have the necessary health and behavioral health services they need to succeed. Um, so we are optimistic and hopeful um, that we can turn, um, turn this crisis around and when you hear about Flint in the future, um, you may remember our incredible history as being the birthplace of cars, um, or you may remember um, the significant economic downturn we had when manufacturing left the city, or you may remember this devastating and preventable water crisis. But what I hope you remember is our kids and how a community came together, how really a world came together and invested in our kids um, and, and made sure that we were able to preserve their tomorrow. Thank you.